episode 3332, The Lord's Word is Flawless. Moms, it's time to rediscover, rejuvenate, and renew who you are in mind, body, and spirit. Welcome to Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie, the show to help you do just that. Here's your host, certified life coach, personal trainer, and nutritionist, Christiane Wargo. Happy, happy day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I pray that you are having a fabulous weekend and enjoying some warmer weather. You know, it's actually nice here, but then this evening, oh, it got a little bit chilly. So hopefully you're going to be enjoying some warmer weather as we are moving into spring. Yes, that means the buds are beginning to bloom and blossom. And oh, how fabulous it is to see God's creation come to life. The Lord's word is flawless. For those of you who are brand new to Creature Now, welcome to this incredible family. I'm so delighted of your presence. If you already haven't had the opportunity, you'll want to head over to CreatureNow.com where you can learn more and sign up for the Kisses newsletter. They keep it simple strategy, everyday solutions to live, love, and impact. Psalm 18 verse 30 says this, As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. You know, we could just sit here on that verse and go really deep, really fast. It says a lot about who God is. And it says also a lot about who we are not. Because I know a lot of us are trying to live this magical life of perfection, always wanting things our way, trying to control. But I want you to imagine a life in which you surrender to the wisdom and sovereignty of the Almighty. Yes, God himself instead of clinging desperately to control. A life where you release the burdens of decision-making and embrace the peace that comes from knowing that God's way is perfect. His way is the only way. And when we do that, we open up ourselves to a profound transformation when we acknowledge that the Lord's word is flawless. But we have troubles, don't we? And those troubles aren't about our bills. They're not about how we're putting food on the table. I mean, yes, that is a problem, right? It's a source that we have to look at and say, okay, I got to deal with this, but it's control. One of the fruits of the spirit is self-control. And by relinquishing control to God, you invite his divine guidance into every aspect of your life. You cease to rely solely on your limited understanding and instead lean on his infinite wisdom. Too much of our life is spent on those wonderful phones Those phones that draw us in, they're like magnets. And they magnetize to our brain and they want to suck us in and suck us dry of all of our emotions. But what would happen if we would lean on God's infinite wisdom and not our phones? Through prayer and reflection on God's word, you can find comfort in knowing his plans for you are far greater than you can ever imagine. The Lord's word is flawless. You know, in our everyday routine, giving control to God means letting go of worry and anxiety as we trust that he is shielding us and guiding our steps. It means approaching challenges with faith and courage, knowing that his promises are true and his love never fails. It means finding joy in the midst of uncertainty as we rest in the assurance that his way is always perfect. You know, last night was a little challenging for me, if I can be so honest, because if you've been following me over the past few years, I've spoken a lot about water, water that isn't beautiful in a pond or in a lake, but water that is flowing inside my house, coming out of my walls all over my floor. Well, we had a freeze late January and We had a pipe burst and unfortunately more water on the west side of our house. And I thought, seriously, and unfortunately during that time I was traveling. So my son calls me, mom, where's the turn off for the water valve? I need the water shut off now. I mean, panic. He is all in it. And this boy is graduating with three bachelor's degrees in less than a month and a blink. Like seriously, it is just around the corner. 
And I'm thinking, oh, no. And I knew when the phone rang and I saw who it was, I'm like, something's going down. Something is going down. Well, of course, we were able to get the plumber out. The plumber came about three days later because the whole area was having issues. When you're in the South and you get a freeze that's not expected, and we really did everything we could to protect our pipes, but it was just one of those things. Well, anyway, long story short, the plumbers came, fixed it, great. A couple of weeks ago, I noticed, wow, it still looks wet there where they repaired it. And I looked and my daughter's boyfriend, who is very close shh, to probably becoming more of a son in love, but we'll leave that for another episode. I asked him to look at it. And he goes, yeah, he goes, yeah, it was really wet. I mean, you had a lot of water in a short period of time come out. He goes, it may still be drying. I'm like, okay, I'll be patient. Well, my daughter was out yesterday during the day and our kitty cat, we used to have three. Now we have two. She's our oldest right now. She's been with us now 15, almost 16 years. She's the longest one so far to live. And they have a great life. They, they really do. Our kitty cats do. But she got out into the garage, and we had a kitty cat container, right, that used to have kitty litter in it, where, of course, they would use the facility. And we think, well, number one, we know she was left out in the garage, not on purpose. It was just she was out there. So she was wandering around, but we think she used it. And then she also walked in something. And so we see her paw prints all over. So I come out in the garage, notice that, and I'm like, I got to clean this up because what's going to happen, it's going to be tracked into the house. I can't have that. So I was cleaning it up and it led me to the spot where we had the pipe freeze. And I noticed that there was just this little bit of dew. And I'm like, that doesn't look right. And it was just a little bit that was sitting there from the insulation from inside the wall. And I put my hand in there and I'm like, that's wet. I put my hand in further. I'm like, no, that's like really wet. Put my hand in further. I'm like, no, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. And yes, sure enough, the pipe that was fixed was still leaking. Now, mind you, this was the end of January. And where are we? Yes, we're at the beginning of March, almost mid-March. So at this time, unfortunately, it was getting close to nine o'clock. I'm like, no one's going to be there. It's not an emergency. It wasn't like the water was flowing everywhere. And if I needed to, I could turn off the water. So I decided that I would wake up early and call them first thing in the morning. And so that's what I did. So actually, that was Friday night. So then this was yesterday morning. I get up and I call our plumber. And I said, you guys came out and fixed the pipe, but it's still leaking. And they said, oh, okay, well, it's covered under warranty. We'll be out. Are you available this afternoon? I said, oh, yes, thank you. Now, what I'm not telling you is what happened between when I went to bed late Friday night and I got up Saturday morning to make that phone call. I was a restless woman. I did not sleep well at all. Now, yes, I went to bed a little bit later than normal. It was after 1230. I was working on some of our TV episodes that are up and coming because we were going to record Saturday afternoon. And as I was preparing for that, obviously, you know, my night got longer. And so I went to bed and I just laid there. No matter what I did, I turned on the TV. That didn't help. I read a book that didn't help. I turned on something on my tablet that didn't work. I emptied out my mailbox that didn't work. I turned to another station that didn't work. I turned on Christian music. I'm like, come on, Lord, just sing me to sleep, please. Literally, two to two and a half hours later of tossing and turning, I'm like, Lord, why? Why am I in this mess again? Do you not know I'm done with water? Like water, I love it, but it needs to be outside my home, not inside my home. Lord, why am I in this situation? We're about ready to have contractors come in and take care of the craziness that happened before. And now I have to deal with this all over again. This is going to put me in a four padded wall room. I cannot take much more. And I just began to breathe for a moment. And I'm like, Lord, why? And I was honest. I was like, why? I'm done with this. And I probably actually said, this is a little unfair. And I heard the voice as clear as daylight. Who controls the flow of water? 
I do. And I thought, okay, that's one way to put me in my corner. That's one way to say that I've lost control because I got to surrender. I've got to surrender that control to God because it wasn't working. Two, two and a half hours later, I'm still tossing and turning, wondering what's going to happen. Oh, yes, I am worrying. I'm not even concerned. I am to the full on anxiety, worrying, going, oh my goodness, what if this happens? And we've got to do this. And then what? I mean, my mind was all over the place. Surrender control to God is not a sign of weakness, but a testament to our faith in his flawless plan for our lives. God controls the flow of water. So when I woke up Saturday morning, yesterday, I made that phone call and they said, are you available this afternoon between 12 and five? <gasps> like literally I paused, like I stopped breathing. I was like, Lord, you did this. And I just know he was looking down, winking at me going, I got you girl. You did not need to lose sleep. Because I control the flow of water. My friend, what is out of control in your life? What do you need to let go of? What do you need to give him? Yeah, it's not fun having water in your house. It's not fun dealing with a bank account that doesn't seem to add up. It's not fun wondering what you're going to do with your job because you've been put on alert that there may be layoffs. It's not fun having to deal with a spouse that doesn't seem to want to get on the 